Ever felt like you're drowning in a sea of information, struggling to keep your head above water? What if the key wasn't to swim faster, but to navigate smarter? Today, we're navigating the waters of knowledge with some life buoy note-taking strategies that'll not only keep you afloat, but have you sailing smoothly towards comprehension paradise. Let's set sail. Today, we'll look at three great note-taking strategies, GIST and LIST, TIA, and Dialogue. First up, GIST and LIST. Imagine you're reading a dense novel and every paragraph seems packed with details. What do you do? Well, instead of scribbling everything down, jot the GIST, that's the main idea, and then list the key details supporting it. This not only helps to condense info, but also makes it easier to review and remember later. Here's how it works. First, your gist, where you identify and jot down the main idea or central theme of what you're reading. It's essentially a brief summary in your own words, and it ensures that you've grasped the crux of the material. After capturing the gist, you can create a list of supporting details, examples, or other pertinent information. And this step helps reinforce the main idea and provides context when you revisit your notes later. So let's look at an example. Suppose you had this text segment in your reading on photosynthesis. There's a lot of information. It tells you what uses the process, how it works, and some of the components of the process. It's information heavy. So when you take your notes, it might look more like this. The gist is photosynthesis is the method plants and some organisms use to convert sunlight into food. And then the list utilizes a pigment called chlorophyll, converts carbon dioxide and water into glucose, and releases oxygen as a byproduct. The beauty of the gist and list method is that it captures the heart of the material while also highlighting important details, making it easier to review and remember. And this method can be particularly helpful for students or professionals who need to process and remember vast amounts of information. Is that you? Now moving on to our next strategy, TIA. No, not that ant that you see once a year at family gatherings. TIA or TIA stands for Title, Information, and Analysis. Under Title, note down the heading or main topic. Information is where you capture those juicy facts or details. And Analysis, this is where you pin down your thoughts, questions, and reflections. So TIA is particularly handy for research papers. It ensures you understand the material and have space for your unique voice and perspective. Here's a breakdown. Title. This is where you capture the main topic or heading of the section you're focusing on. It helps organize your notes and provides a clear reference for when you're revisiting the material. Information. Under this section, you'll write down the key facts, data, and details from the text or lecture. This is the heart of your notes, where the core content is captured. And finally, analysis. This is where the TIA method really shines. Instead of just jotting down information verbatim, you're encouraged to reflect, ask questions, and jot down your personal insights, interpretations, or potential applications of the information. It promotes active learning and ensures that you're not just passively absorbing content. Let's look at an example. Suppose you had this text segment on the Renaissance in your reading. And again, it's information heavy. You're TIA notes, on the other hand, might look like this. Title, the Renaissance period. Information, European cultural, artistic, political, and economic rebirth. And a few other key bits of information. But then you have that analysis section where you get to interact with the material and really get your critical thinking skills going with questions like, why was there a sudden shift from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance in terms of thought and culture? The TIA method ensures that you not only capture essential details, but also engage with the material on a deeper level. And this makes the content more memorable and provides a richer understanding of the subject at hand. Our last strategy, dialogue, brings a conversational spin. Ever talked back to a book? Now's your chance. As you read, write down your responses, questions, or disagreements. 
Think of it as a dialogue between you and the author. And this method is fabulous for critical thinking, ensuring you're not just absorbing, but actively engaging with the content. As you read or listen, you're essentially having a dialogue with the text. And it's a little like the analysis portion of our last method, TIA. You can ask questions about statements or ideas that aren't clear, or maybe that intrigue you, or things you disagree with. You'll also respond, providing answers to your own questions based on further reading, research, or reflection. You might even note personal opinions or feelings about certain things. And you'll also reflect, considering the implications of the information, making connections to other knowledge you possess, or pondering on broader significance. Let's take an example. Suppose you have this text segment on multitasking. Again, it's a little information rich, which is why you'll want to take some notes. And if you use a dialogue method, it might look a little like this. Question, respond, and reflect. And questions might include things like, how do these studies measure productivity and cognitive function? That's an important one to ask. You might respond with that personal observation. I do feel scattered and less productive when I try to juggle too many tasks. And some of your reflection might include what it reminds you of. Perhaps the book Deep Work by Cal Newport, which emphasizes focused, undistracted work sessions. You see, the dialogue method transforms the usually one-sided act of reading or listening into an interactive process. This fosters a personal connection to the material, making it more memorable and meaningful. And by consistently applying this method, readers or listeners can develop sharper critical thinking skills and a more discerning approach to information. Now, an added bonus of all these methods, they guard against unintentional plagiarism. Your teacher will love that. By processing and jotting down information in your own words, you're building a deeper understanding. This means when you write essays or papers, you're more likely to phrase things in your unique style instead of unintentionally mirroring the source. And remember, literature is all about understanding, interpreting, and adding to the conversation. And by taking effective notes, you're setting the stage for original and insightful contributions. Thanks for tuning in. And if you found these strategies handy, give this video a thumbs up and share your note-taking tales in the comments below. And until next time, keep those pins or keyboards dancing.